Good afternoon, everyone. We're here at North Table Mountain in Golden, Colorado. We got Super Dave, AKA Dad up there. And uh, we managed to get our hands on some Levo SLs. As you may or may not know, we both have the full power Levos and big fan of those bikes for sure. But right now I only have one bike and that's the Levo. And kind of want something with a little less weight. Kind of miss that analog bike feel. I have talked about that a little bit in the past. I think it is one of the downsides of a full power. It is an upside in certain situations where you just need to plow through some chunk, something like that. Otherwise, having something a little more nimble, a little more agile, kind of seems like the way to go. This is our first time ever on the Levo SLs, and these have the Gen 2 motor, 50 Newton meters of torque, and I think the battery is a 350 watt hour. Today we're gonna to give that a little test on something that's super familiar to us, North Table, of course. It's not the most difficult riding, but this is a good place to do something with a new bike that you're not so familiar with. It's gonna just be a first impressions because I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time with this bike. It should be just enough to get the feel right off the bat. The power it's putting down is pretty good. It feels like maybe two thirds the power, maybe three quarters the power from the Levo. And the weight, I can already tell, it feels a little lighter. It climbs pretty good. Motor is very quiet. My dad says his is a little louder. Might have a lot more mileage on it, but I can barely hear this one. And one of the biggest issues with the previous SL was the motor noise. So I'm glad they toned that down quite a bit. As far as the weight, this one's clocking in at around 40 pounds, I believe. So pretty much right in the middle of where my stumpy Evo was and where my Levo is. I am riding an S3. It does feel a little small. I should be on an S4. It's kind of more in my range. And I'd rather have a slightly larger bike than a smaller bike. But yeah, it's handling nice. It's pretty uh, predictable at this point. Kind of just feels like every other specialized mountain bike. They really got them dialed in as far as just the overall feel. Everything feels super solid. I'm going a lot slower than I would be on my Levo right now. And I'm putting in, I'm putting in about the same amount as I normally would on my Levo. I might be breathing a little harder because I feel like I'm trying to push myself. I'm so used to going really quick up these uphills, especially this one right here. So my brain just naturally kind of wants to push on it. Thank you, one more. This particular bike also has the SRAM transmission on it, which I'm already a big fan of. I've only been on this for 10 minutes. I really think the future is gonna be belt drives and gearboxes and things like that, but this uh, this system really improves the, some would say, very archaic chain design with the derailleur and all that. Certainly an improvement. We're coming up to kind of a, a little punchy rock climb here. We're gonna see how she does in turbo. Okay, I was definitely cranking down on it, but not too bad. You can feel the torque drop off pretty quickly once you're really railing on it. The Levo kind of just feels like it keeps going, but this one you can definitely cap out pretty quick. Sometimes when you need that little extra juice getting up and over something, it's not always gonna be there. Another note is we're almost to the top here. I believe it's six to 800 feet, somewhere in that range to get to the top of North Table. And started with around 50% and I'm at 35. And I've been running between trail and turbo mode. Seems like this thing is kind of thirsty on the power. They do make a battery extender. 
kind of expensive and adds more weight. And that's kind of going against the idea of the SL. So about 15% to get up to the top of Cottonwood in trail mode. Like I said, a little more than I expected, but it's kind of hard to tell unless you go through the whole battery and do a long range test. What are you thinking so far? Uh, with mine, with the micro tune, I have to, the difference is probably 20 to 30%. 20 to 30% more on this bike to equal the Levo. Yeah. Approximately. Yeah, I'm running trail mode, but I like running my, my Levo in turbo or trail mode. But I've, I've noticed that popping it in turbo, I have not had that extra little boost feeling yeah. that you get. It's kind of addicting almost yeah, <laughs> with the it's Levos. Plenty, it's plenty for me to still get up the trail. But yeah. There's times when I need it. You know, I'm not going to have it with this bike. Yeah. What did that have on it? Uh, 60 something. something. And this one was 50. Yeah. What are you at? 25. Yeah. See that these things. Burned up. <laughs> so he's at 25 already. He, uh, he started with about 10% lower than I had. So yeah, that checks out. Um, if I can feel a difference in the weight bill. Yeah, for sure. Just a, a little more. The agility is just, it's a little different. Yeah. More agile. Well, we're going to find that out quite a bit more here on the downhill. Yeah. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, when you really want to crank on it still and kind of haul butt up the mountain, you still can. You're just gonna plow through the battery. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with the size of the motor and the weight of the bike in general. This thing has quite a bit of power going on down there. We're gonna try downhill now. Check out a little flow on these bikes. Yeah. Okay. All right. After you. All right. Let's see what it's all about. Wow. Feels much different already. Kind of feels scarier, honestly. <laughs> Wow. I feel like I can change directions quite quickly. It kind of leans into the turn a little differently. Definitely can feel the higher center of gravity on this. Wow, <laughs> that's fun. Wow, this is, <laughs> huh. I miss this feeling of a nice light, light bike. Oh, can't even talk. Super cool. All right, try some tech here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, not going off that drop. We'll try this one now. Okay. Yeah, so that sort of stuff, minus the tight turns at the bottom, all the chunkiness does feel better on my Levo. Kind of just feels more solid. A little less sketchy. Okay. This is uh wow, it rides so much lighter. That 10 pounds is really a difference. Ooh. <laughs> I'm braking a little less than I used to. Mm. 
not quite as much momentum, feels like. All these are pretty obvious things, but pointing them out anyways. Wow, <laughs> I'm not used to the extra air time. Cool. I actually went through that quicker than I normally do. I think it was the, again, the extra maneuverability. Wow. <laughs> I know I keep saying that. Howdy. Howdy. Oh, excuse us. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> airtime is really nice. Well, I'm gonna hit a lap or two at the bike park next. So, let's see how that goes. Okay. Super cool. Wow, <laughs> that makes those jumps a lot easier, that's for sure. Sweet. Cool. Well, yeah, that's a wrap on the Levo SL. Pretty sweet bike. All right, that's a wrap. Cheers. Overall, what'd you think? Like you said, good and bad. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely different than the Levos. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good time. As always, thank you for watching. Best way to support my channel is hit that subscribe button. Might as well hit the like button while you're at it as well. And we'll see you next time. Peace.